We always pay attention to the Federal Reserve and their actions, and no doubt they are critical. But more attention needs to be paid to the LIBOR rate. Hundreds of trillions of dollars are using this, and it could spell disaster as rates continue to rise. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at one critical factor for the global economic collapse. You are looking at the LIBOR rate. This is the three-month London Interbank offered rate. One of the most important indicators for what we like to look at to determine the global economic collapse. And of course, this has been rising along with the Fed funds rate, along with the interest rates in Canada and other countries. It's been slow, but it has been steady. Now, you can see here that as the Fed funds rate shows us, so does the LIBOR rate. And that is every time they increase rates, we have a recession that follows. Rates increase, recession follows. Okay, we are heading into the same territory today. As I've always explained, the same with the Fed funds rate. But what is interesting is that we see this. We cannot get to the previous high that we had before the last recession. So we know that it isn't going to be able to hit the same area. Therefore, we can expect the LIBOR rate, which is sitting around that 2% mark. And where it will go, you know, I'm not 100% sure. Back in the year 2000, it hit just under 7%. This previous instance it was at maybe five and a half percent so you know looking at this i'm not really sure maybe four percent maybe a little more we have a little while to get to that mark now you can see however on these charts that they really do increase quickly doesn't take a, a lot of time um, but it all depends. There's so many factors. So we need to understand how important the LIBOR rate is. I want to cover this article first because when you think about it, you're talking about $370 trillion in this benchmark here that I believe is absolutely critical. I'm going to talk about why. This article here basically gets into a lot of the details. I just really wanted to mention it because of the amount here, $370 trillion. LIBOR is very funny because in that first syllable, lie, it tells us what this rate really is. They were fixing this rate. The big companies sat down and they said, what do you want the LIBOR rate to be at today? And they were literally caught and what happened? A little slap on the wrist. But it is still so important because you have so much money that is dependent on this rate, that moves through and uses this rate. So I'll get into that right now. Think about this. You have all these big corporations, wealthy people, they got a lot of money, and they're able to do this securities backed loans so they can use their stocks as an example as collateral and the LIBOR rate is being used to determine uh, you know let me read this securities backed loans have several benefits they can offer the borrower substantially lower interest rates and reduced risk relative to alternatives like margins. Now, margin is something I talk about all the time on here because that has been growing, that has been increasing over the years. And as far as I'm concerned, that is very disastrous. That's gonna present itself at some point in the near future. We are in the territory of financial crisis and dot-com boom and bust with that as well. So that's huge. But here they're saying it's going to be lower interest for those who are doing this because you're using LIBOR, okay? Although they still contain greater risk than other forms of lending. Additionally, they offer greater flexibility in repayment and provide a cure 
uh, period to meet demands for additional collateral. This differs from immediacy requirement for paying back a margin loan. God forbid you have to pay your debt back. The interest rate on a securities backed loan is often based on a premium over the LIBOR. So if that LIBOR is increasing, guess what? The interest rate that you're paying on that securities backed loan is going to increase as well. Very important. You have $370 trillion. A lot of that is going to be, think about it, how much money is in these securities backed loans based on the LIBOR. Suddenly, a huge amount of money globally has just become more expensive to borrow. You're going to have a slowdown. You're going to have a recession. You're going to have, um, you know, a critical time frame in which people are going to say, maybe I don't want to do this today. Maybe I'll wait until next month and see how things go. And then things get worse. Well, you know, I'll wait until next month and so on and so on. And things slow down. The velocity of money slows down. You're seeing people, you know, foregoing certain business ventures. They're not getting into this or that. I think it's going to be very, very um, powerful what's happening here. This spread varies, but typically the larger an investor's portfolio value, the lower the interest rate. In certain cases, the lender may lower the interest rate on a securities back loan if allowed to place an abundance of caution lien on the investor's real estate property or properties. Now, it goes on. Anyway, but I'm just saying that you have so much interconnected with that. So much at stake. The stock market itself. I mean, when you're getting a loan... Based on this, you have your collateral there, whether it is, you know, property, whether it is, um, uh, you know, different assets, paper assets or whatever. Based on this, we have a big problem as rates rise. That's totally fine when rates are moving downward. As they rise, huge problems. Okay. Investor credit and the market. I wanted to show you this here because we are far surpassed what was seen uh, previously when we look at negative credit balance. Credit balance is calculated as the sum of free credit cash accounts and credit balances in margin accounts minus margin debt. So we have this trouble that we've encountered here. By the way, the blue line here is uh, the S&P 500. So you see where it has gone. Surpassed, obviously, uh, the previous highs here and we are into new highs all the time. And looking at this, red line, negative credit balance. So we moved into this territory right when we had a crash, okay? Moved into it again briefly here, and what happened? Right, we had a crash. And then we have now gone just absolutely insane. And what will happen? I don't know. But you will see that this continues to happen. Margin is very, very big problem. And um, it's obviously going to present itself in the near future. I mean, it's just inevitable. As rates rise, whether it's, you know, LIBOR rate having its own issues there, whether you're looking at the Fed funds rate or any other uh, central bank interest rate, it is a problem as rates rise. Net national savings as a percentage of GDP, potential impact on growth. I think it's important to note that the average individual is not saving, they're not making good investment choices, and uh, you know at the same time, they're unable to save any money. These are all big factors. Looking at this here, the GDP growth, so the more money that's printed into the system, it devalues the dollars. And as a result, we have to put more in to get more out. So the GDP is looking terrible in this regard. Okay, Net national savings is the combination of consumer-based savings, government savings, and corporate savings. That's what I wanted to show you here. Essentially, just uh, what I wanted to describe, it's declining over the years. It's not good. It's definitely not good in this case. Now, this is Warren Buffett's favorite indicator, the stock market cap as a percentage of the GDP. And it is far beyond bubble territory, okay? You can see this green line here is considered bubble territory. During the financial crisis, we actually came back into a time where things were normal. 
Okay, so the S&P at 666 was in that area of being, okay, this is fairly normal. We can start to invest. We can look at that. But what happened? It went up right away and it moved into overvalued and it moved beyond that into bubble territory. And now we are basically at the level we saw during the dot-com boom and bust. However, the Warren Buffett indicator is strangely not being looked at by Warren Buffett because he just bought a large sum of stock, even though we are in this territory showing us, hey, things are way out of whack today. Very quickly, two things. Quarterly report on bank derivatives activities despite the Fed's rate hikes and intended tightening. The big dealers are all reported slightly more gross derivatives exposure in 2017. Of course, all the big banks take on more and more of these silly, ridiculous, and crazy derivatives products, and they want that to expand. There are so many, and there are always new ones coming online. This here is basically the ECB. Just wanted to show you that as time goes on, we are supposed to see things expanding gradually. And we can sort of, as they're putting this line across here, some sort of, you know, relative growth, whether that is, you know, the GDP numbers, whether that is with every sort of scheme and scam that they're pulling here, we should at least see a steadiness to that, some sort of, you know, minimal volatility, but that's not the case today, okay? I just wanted to show you the fact that we have seen growth, supposedly, but it's not the growth that we want to see. It has been so stagnant, and when you take the whole, you know, as a whole, you get a different picture. Pick apart the average, or just, I should say, take a country like Germany out of the equation, out of the, you know, the EU, and suddenly the picture of the EU looks much different, okay? We have to take all those very rosy figures out, all of the anomalies out, and then look at things, so if you look at the U.S., I want to take out the U.S. stock market or the top 20 stocks, let's say. We suddenly have a very, very different picture. Okay, so that's just the reason why I wanted to mention this. I'm going to end it there. It's gone on far too long. Thank you for listening to me rant on. If you found the video informative, please give me a thumbs up. I hope that you realize the severity of the LIBOR rate and how important it is for the global economic collapse where we are definitely heading. If you found the video informative, I know that you will find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can actually flip through these books. All you gotta do is go over to Amazon. There are links in the description of this video. You just click on that, it brings you over there. You can do the look inside feature, which will allow you to flip through the pages of the books to see if you like them. Take care.